Seasonal allergies are getting worse, and climate change might be to blame. A recent study found that North American pollen seasons are becoming longer by 20 days on average, and increasing in severity by 21%. As things become warmer and the plants become more energetic, they're going to produce more pollen, and they're going to produce it over a longer period of time. And we see that already happening. This isn't some model. This is not going to happen in 10 years. It's already happening. Although pollen can be a nuisance, it serves an actual purpose. Male plants release the fine powdery substance for reproduction, and the wind or animals carry it to female plants. Pollination typically happens in the spring when it's warm enough for plants to thrive, but as weather patterns shift and we experience warmer temperatures earlier and for longer, plants have more time to release pollen. So your freeze free season is essentially your last freezing temperature in the springtime and the time between the first freezing temperature in the fall when those plants can grow and thrive. The analysis conducted by Climate Central, we looked at 203 U.S. cities and their freeze free season or their growing season. And on average across the U.S., that lengthened by about 15 days or more than two weeks. In some parts of the United States, this growing season has increased by more than 60 days. And that's not the only problem for allergy sufferers. It turns out that carbon dioxide, in addition to being the principal greenhouse gas, is also the source of carbon for plants to grow. And when plants grow more, well, it sounds good, but what we find is that there's a whole host of plants that produce pollen that are also growing more. So they're being directly stimulated by the increase in CO2. With the rise in carbon dioxide, what we're seeing is a change in the structure of the pollen itself. When you breathe in pollen, your body recognizes proteins on the surface of the pollen that are foreign. Your body's immune system responds. These two data uh, sets indicate that CO2, in addition to changing the flowering and, and causing the plants to grow more, may also be qualitatively affecting the pollen. It may be putting more of those proteins on the surface of the pollen that your immune system reacts to. Scientists say if the earth continues to warm, seasonal allergies will likely only get worse. This spells bad news for 26% of American adults and 19% of children suffering from seasonal allergies. Obviously, it can be a little bit difficult to avoid your allergies when you're outdoors, but uh, medications are a great option to treat. So something that I often recommend starting with is antihistamine. And then if that's not working, there are nasal sprays as well, which are very safe and effective. Those are all great options to start with. And it's even better because they're available over the counter. So you can start them on your own, you know, and see how they work for you. Allergy shots are a great option if um, medications are not working for you. We would have to test you first to see exactly what you're allergic to. Once the testing is done and we know specifically what you're allergic to, we actually inject you with very small amounts of what you're allergic to. The shots are retraining your immune system to not react as much to the allergens that you were reacting to before. Scientists catching up. Better treatments must happen alongside efforts to better understand rising pollen counts. There's just not enough stations right now to monitor pollen. Part of that is because it's still old school. I have to learn how to recognize the pollen. I have to sit there hour after hour after hour at a microscope, identifying the pollen, literally counting the pollen on a slide. We need to AI it. We need to put something in there that will do it automatically so that we can begin to put pollen stations out in high density urban areas to determine not just the amounts of pollen, but how are those pollen interacting with other types of urban air pollution? There's so much more about this that we don't understand. In the long term, the answer you're gonna get is we need to stop adding CO2 to the atmosphere. We need to stop what's happening with respect to climate change. Um, that's the long-term solution 